The hottest place in the whole solar system is not the sun, but a fusion reactor in Oxfordshire. So let's have a look at how it works. We're going to do with nuclear fission first of all. Fission is the splitting of a heavy nucleus into lighter nuclei. Now, when that happens, it releases energy. That's the whole point of a nuclear reactor trying to make energy. And it does it in the form of gamma rays, which sometimes comes up in exam questions. You need to make sure you mention a heavy nucleus. Um, it's not an atom. It's just the nucleus we're talking about, the center of the atom. And the kind of elements it occurs with are uranium and plutonium, both what's called fissionable elements, very heavy. Now, how do you make it work in a nuclear reactor? Well, we need to have something called a chain reaction happening. To kick off this chain reaction, we need a neutron. So the neutron uh, will get fired into a uranium, for example, uh, nucleus, and the uranium will split. That is nuclear fission. When that happens, there are some additional neutrons that are also released. Normally three, sometimes two, sometimes four. Now those neutrons will then collide with and be absorbed by three other uranium nuclei. Now those will also split and they'll also release neutrons. So by the time of the second kind of interaction, you've gone from one to three to nine different neutrons in this example. So hopefully you can see if you were to do this like five, 10, 20 times, you would have hundreds and thousands of neutrons produced. So in a chain reaction, neutrons are released, um, which causes more fission or can cause further fission to occur. So that's the difference between fission and a chain reaction. A chain reaction is lots of fission happening due to those neutrons being released. And if that happens, you get a nuclear bomb if you don't control it. Obviously, we do want to control it in a nuclear power station. So what we would use are, um, is a setup like you see below. So in a nuclear reactor, you don't just have nuclear fuel. Uh, you have a couple of other things as well. So you've got the fuel, uh, which is normally uh, in a uh, tank, um, kind of in this rod or cylindrical um, form, and that's uranium or plutonium. You also have these things called control rods. As the name suggests, they're designed to control the reaction, and you can lower them in or take them out of the reactor, depending on whether you want to increase or decrease it. Now, how they work is they absorb neutrons. They absorb some of those extra neutrons uh, that come out, so they slow the reaction down. So maybe instead of three being produced, you maybe only have one being produced. So the reaction continues, but it is uh, not a runaway uh, reaction. It doesn't continue uh, into a nuclear bomb. You also have something called a moderator, uh, which slows down neutrons, which I know sounds like a bad thing, but that actually means they're more likely uh, to undergo fission with further uh, uranium nuclei. So these neutrons are not too fast or slow, just the right speed so that fission can occur. Now, the whole point of uh, the nuclear reactor is to release energy. Um, how does that happen? Well, it's as heat. Okay, so heat is released just like with a coal power station, meaning that you can use it to heat up water to make steam. You turn a turbine, you turn a generator, all that stuff that's exactly the same as a fossil fuel power station. So why do we bother with nuclear reactors then? What's the point in using those other, other than fossil fuels? So uh, point one um, is that there's more energy uh, per one kilogram, not just more energy, but in one kilogram of uranium, there's about a million times more energy than coal. Um, they also um, have technologies readily available, unlike some renewables, um, which will need a bit of development. And I forgot it on this list here, but there's no greenhouse gases produced. I'll add that in later. Disadvantages, don't say it blows up, don't say it's radioactive, um, it produces radioactive waste. So it doesn't radioactive itself, you actually get more radiation from a coal power station due to some byproducts, uh, but it produces radioactive waste which is an issue to store. Currently, we either bury it deep, deep underground um, or do uh, some treatment first before that happens, uh, but it's difficult to deal with. Let's talk about nuclear fusion then. So easy to mix up, but fusion, um, instead of splitting a heavy nucleus, fusion is the joining of two lighter nuclei or light nuclei to make a heavier, one heavier nucleus. Okay, so fission, splitting, fusion, joining. Don't say fusing together because it's kind of in the name. Say joining, much more likely to get marks in an exam. So as this process um, involves lighter nuclei, the lightest nuclei, the nucleus we know is a hydrogen um, nucleus. And this happens in stars. It happens naturally. 
Now, when this happens, obviously energy is released, and that's the reason we have uh, light from the sun, and the reason why it warms us up is that there's energy released. Now, sometimes you can get asked about this, where does the energy come from? Now, uh, the full explanation for this is at A level, um, but due to an equation which you might have heard of called M equals mc squared, some mass gets converted to energy. That's the statement you need to know. Don't worry about the equation. Some mass gets converted to energy. Now, you might have realised if you have a hydrogen nucleus, that's just a proton. Now, joining two protons together is difficult to achieve. As you might be able to tell, two protons are both positive, meaning they are going to repel each other. What we call that process is electrostatic repulsion. Okay, So two like charges, like two uh, positives, um, are going to repel each other. So to be able to achieve that, what you need to have is a very high temperature and a very high pressure. Now, in stars, that's not a problem. They're very big, have high gravity, lean to pressure, and they're very hot. But on Earth, this can be a problem because we need to get really high temperatures and really high pressures. So what we do, um, and there's one of these in Oxfordshire, as I mentioned, this is the hottest place in the solar system when it's up and running. Uh, we have this thing called plasma. Um, now, plasma is just a charged gas where the electrons have been ripped, ripped apart from the nuclei. And this plasma... Um, will burn and melt any sort of material. So we actually can't let it touch the sides. We contain it with magnetic fields and we heat it by passing current through it. And it's about 100 million degrees or so, so hotter than the center of the sun. And even then, it's still very difficult to achieve this nuclear fusion, more energy out than we put in. So advantage of nuclear fusion, while we're bothering to try and uh, achieve it, um, is that there's no harmful radio radioactive waste. There's also no carbon dioxide produced as well. Um, there's just a bit of helium as the waste uh, kind of product overall, which is pretty harmless. The main disadvantages are that we can't currently get it to work. So having a high temperature, high pressure is great, but it currently doesn't produce more energy out than in. What does a nuclear physicist have for dinner? It's fission chips, of course.